Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the large intestine. To begin with, the large intestine extends from the ileocecal junction to the anus. It is about 1.5 meter long and is divided into cecum, ascending colon, right colic flexure, transverse colon, left colic flexure, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and the anal canal. In the angle between the cecum and the terminal part of the ileum, there is a narrow diverticulum called the vermiform appendix. First, let's look at the cecum in detail. The cecum is a large blind sac forming the commencement of the large intestine. It is situated in the right iliac fossa above the lateral half of the inguinal ligament right here. It communicates superiorly with the ascending colon, medially at the level of the cecoiliac junction with the ilium and posteromedially with the appendix. It is 6 cm long and 7.5 cm broad. Now let's look at the relations of the cecum. This is the outline of the cecum. The anterior relations of the cecum include the coils of the intestine and the anterior abdominal wall, whereas the posterior relations include muscles that is the right psoas major muscle right here and the iliacus muscle right here, nerves that include the genitofemoral nerve right here, femoral nerve that you see right here and the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh right here. Concising the important points under the introduction to the large intestine, large intestine extends from the ileocecal junction to the anus. It is about 1.5 meter long and is divided into cecum, ascending colon, right colic flexure, transverse colon, left colic flexure, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and the anal canal. In the angle between the cecum and the terminal part of the ileum, there is a narrow diverticulum called the vermiform appendix. Looking at the cecum, the cecum is a large blind sac forming the commencement of the large intestine. It is situated in the right iliac fossa above the lateral half of the inguinal ligament. It communicates superiorly with the ascending colon, medially at the level of the CQ iliac junction with the ilium, posteromedially with the appendix. The dimensions of the cecum that it is 6 cm long and 7.5 cm broad. Looking at the relations of the cecum, anteriorly it is related to the coils of the intestine and anterior abdominal wall. Whereas posteriorly it is related to muscles that is the right psoas and the iliacus, nerves that include the genitofemoral, femoral and lateral cutaneous nerves, vessels including the testicular or ovarian and finally the appendix. The vessels and nerves supplying the cecum include the arterial supply is by the cecal branches of iliocolic artery and veins it drains into the superior mesenteric vein. Next let us look at the iliocecal valve. The lower end of the ilium right here opens on the posteromedial aspect of the cecocolic junction. The ileocecal opening is guarded by the ileocecal valve. Now let us look at the structure of the ileocecal valve. The valve has two lips and two frenulum. The two lips are the upper lip and the lower lip. The upper lip is horizontal and lies at the iliocolic junction. The lower lip is longer and concave and lies at the iliocecal junction. The two frenula that is the left frenula and the right frenula or the anterior and posterior frenula are formed by the fusion of the lips at the ends of the aperture right here. The function of the ileocecal valve is that it prevents the reflux from the cecum to the ileum. It regulates the passage of ileal contents into the cecum. Concising the important points under the ileocecal valve, the lower end of the ileum opens on the posteromedial aspect of the cecocolic junction. The ileocecal opening is guarded by the ileocecal valve. Now let us look at the structure. The valve has two lips and two frenula. The upper lip is horizontal and lies at the iliocolic junction. The lower lip is longer and concave and lies at the iliocecal junction. The two frenula are formed by the fusion of the lips 
at the two ends of the aperture. The functions include it prevents reflux from the cecum to ileum and it regulates the passage of ileal contents into the cecum. Next let's move on to the vermiform appendix. This is a worm like diverticulum arising from the posteromedial wall 2 cm below the ileocecal orifice. Its dimension is it is 2 to 20 cm in length. It is longer in children than in adults. Looking at the position of the vermiform appendix, it lies in the right iliac fossa. The base of the appendix is fixed while the tip can point in any direction. The positions of the appendix are compared to those of the hour hand of a clock. The appendix may pass upwards or to the right which is called the paracolic or the 11 o'clock position. It may pass behind the cecum or colon which is called the retrocolic or the 12 o'clock position which is the commonest position. The appendix may pass upwards and to the left which is called the splenic or 2 o'clock position. It may pass horizontally and to the left which is called the promontoric or the 3 o'clock position. It may descend into the pelvis which is called the pelvic or the 4 o'clock position and finally it may lie below the cecum which is called the mid inguinal or the 6 o'clock position. You can remember the positions of the appendix using this diagram. The 11 o'clock is the paracolic position, 12 is the retrocolic, 2 is the splenic position, 3 is the promontoric position and 4 is the pelvic. Finally, the 6 is the subsequal or the mid inguinal position. The appendicular orifice is situated on the posteromedial aspect of the cecum below the ileocecal orifice. It is occasionally guarded by a fold of mucous membrane called the valve of Gerlach. The McBurney's point is the site of maximum tenderness in appendicitis. Now looking at the peritoneal relations of the appendix, the appendix is suspended by a small triangular fold of peritoneum called the mesoappendix or the appendicular mesentery. The fold passes upwards behind the ileum and is attached to the left layer of the mesentery. Looking at the peritoneal relations of the appendix, the appendix is suspended by a small triangular fold of peritoneum called the mesoappendix or the appendicular mesentery. The fold passes upwards behind the ileum and is attached to the left layer of the mesentery. Now looking at the blood supply, the appendicular artery is a branch of the lower division of the ileocolic artery. Concising the important points under the vermiform appendix, this is a worm like diverticulum arising from the posteromedial wall 2 cm below the ileocecal orifice. Dimensions are it is 2 to 20 cm in length, longer in children than in adults. The position appendix lies in the right iliac fossa. The base of the appendix is fixed while the tip can point in any direction. The positions are compared to those of the hour hand of a clock. The appendix may pass upwards or to the right which is the paracolic or 11 o'clock position. It may lie behind the cecum or colon that is a retrocecal or 12 o'clock position that is the commonest. The appendix may pass upwards and to the left that is a splenic or 2 o'clock position. It may pass horizontally to the left that is a promontoric or 3 o'clock position. It may descend into the pelvis that is a pelvic or the 4 o'clock position. And finally, it may lie below the cecum that is a mid inguinal or 6 o'clock position. The appendicular orifice is situated on the posteromedial aspect of the cecum below the ileocecal orifice. It is occasionally guarded by a fold of mucous membrane that is a valve of Gerlach. McBurney's point is the site of maximum tenderness in appendicitis. Looking at the peritoneal relations, the appendix is suspended by a small triangular fold of peritoneum called the mesoappendix or appendicular mesentery. The fold passes upwards behind the ileum and is attached to the left layer of the mesentery. Looking at the blood supply, the appendicular artery is a branch of lower division of the ileocolic artery. Blood from the appendix is drained by appendicular, ileocolic and superior mesenteric veins. 
the lymphatic drainage is by the iliocolic nodes the nerve supply is by the sympathetic nerves that is a celiac plexus and parasympathetic nerves that is a vagus nerve moving on to the next part of the large intestine we have the ascending colon it is about 12.5 cm long and extends from the cecum to the inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver here it bends to the left to form the right colic flexure it is covered by peritoneum on all three sides anteriorly the ascending colon is related to the coils of the small intestine the right edge of the greater omentum and the anterior abdominal wall so the anterior surface of the ascending colon has three relations posteriorly the ascending colon is related to the iliacus muscle quadratus lumborum transversus abdominis muscle it is also related to the lateral cutaneous nerve ilioinguinal nerve and ilio hypogastric nerves as well as the right kidney so it is related to three muscles three nerves and the right kidney the right colic flexure or the hepatic flexure lies at the junction of the ascending colon and the transverse colon right here it lies on the lower part of the right kidney andro superiorly it is related to the colic impression on the inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver in this diagram you can see that the right colic flexure is andro superiorly related to the colic impression on the inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver right here concising the important points under the ascending colon it is about 12.5 cm long and extends from the cecum to the inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver here it bends to the left to form the right colic flexure it is covered by peritoneum on three sides anteriorly it is related to the coils of the small intestine right edge of the greater omentum and anterior abdominal wall posteriorly it is related to three muscles three nerves and the right kidney the three muscles are the iliacus quadratus lumborum and transversus abdominis the three nerves are the lateral cutaneous nerve ilioinguinal nerve iliohypogastric nerve and the right kidney the right colic flexure that is a hepatic flexure lies at the junction of the ascending colon and the transverse colon it lies on the lower part of the right kidney andro superiorly it is related to the colic impression on the inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver moving on to the next part of the large intestine we have the transverse colon the transverse colon is about 50 cm long it extends across the abdomen from the right colic flexure to the left colic flexure anteriorly it is related to the greater omentum and to the anterior abdominal wall posteriorly it is related to the second part of the duodenum the head of the pancreas and to the coils of the small intestine the splenic flexure right here lies on the lower part of the left kidney and the diaphragm behind the stomach and below the anterior end of the spleen right here this is the left colic flexure and the flexure is attached to the 11th rib by a horizontal fold of peritoneum which is called the phrenico colic ligament that you see right here the ligament supports the spleen and forms a partial upper limit of the left paracolic gutter concising the important points under the transverse colon and the left colic flexure the transverse colon is about 50 cm long it extends across the abdomen from the right colic flexure to the left colic flexure anteriorly it is related to the greater omentum and to the anterior abdominal wall posteriorly it is related to the second part of the duodenum the head of the pancreas and to the coils of the small intestine moving to the left colic flexure that is a splenic flexure the left colic flexure lies at the junction of the transverse colon and the descending colon the flexure lies on the lower part of the left kidney and the diaphragm behind the stomach and below the anterior end of the spleen the flexure is attached to the 11th rib by a horizontal fold of peritoneum which is called the phrenico colic ligament and finally this ligament supports the spleen and forms a partial upper limit of the left paracolic gutter moving on to the next part of the large intestine we have the descending colon it is about 25 cm long 
and extends from the left colic flexure to the sigmoid colon. The descending colon is narrower than the ascending colon as you can see right here. Anteriorly it is related to the coils of the intestine. Posteriorly it is related to the transversus abdominis muscle, the quadratus lumborum, the iliacus and the psoas muscles, the four muscles. The next part is the sigmoid colon. It is about 37.5 cm long and extends from the pelvic brim to the third piece of the sacrum where it becomes the rectum. Concising the important points under the descending colon and the sigmoid colon, the descending colon is about 25 cm long and extends from the left colic flexure to the sigmoid colon. The descending colon is narrower than the ascending colon. Anteriorly, it is related to the coils of the small intestine. Posteriorly, it is related to the transversus abdominis, quadratus lumborum, iliacus and the psoas muscles. The sigmoid colon or the pelvic colon is about 37.5 cm long and extends from the pelvic brim to the third piece of the sacrum where it becomes the rectum. Finally, looking at the features of the large intestine and the clinical anatomy, the large intestine is wider in caliber than the small intestine, small bags of peritoneum filled with fat and called the appendices epiploicae are scattered over the surface of the large intestine. The longitudinal muscle coat forms only a thin layer in this part of the gut. The greater part of it forms three ribbon-like bands called tenia coli. One tenia is tenia libera, the second is the tenia mesocolica and the third is the tenia omentalis. The tenia libera is placed anteriorly in the cecum, tenia mesocolica posteromedial surface of the cecum and tenia omentalis is posterolaterally in the cecum. The clinical anatomy is that cecum is commonly involved in amoebiasis and intestinal tuberculosis. Inflammation of the appendix is known as appendicitis. Appendicular dyspepsia is a chronic appendicitis which produces dyspepsia resembling disease of stomach, duodenum or the gallbladder. This is the free tenia or the tenia libra that is seen in the anterior surface of the cecum. Similarly, Tenia mesocolica is seen in the posteromedial aspect of the cecum, whereas tenia omentalis is seen in the posterolateral aspect of the cecum. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of large intestine as well as other topics of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, psychology, pathology and pharmacology, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.